Good afternoon folks. Welcome back to Advanced Higher Inorganic Chemistry um, Part 2. I'm going to split this video into three different parts I think. Um, and the first part will follow on from our initial video and explain what happens to the energy in photons when they hit uh, atoms. Uh, and the second and third parts I think I'll talk about techniques called spectroscopy uh, and how chemists use them to analyse things. Um, so I want to talk about atoms and energy. Actually, specifically, I want to talk about electrons and energy. Here's how we used to draw our, uh, <laughs> our atoms. And life was nice and simple back in third year. And there's our outer electron. Now, we said yesterday that an incoming blue photon can hit that electron. And what happens to all this energy that's in the blue photon? It wasn't 166 kilojoules, if my memory serves me correctly. That was for red. I asked you to go and calculate the blue energy. So there will be X kilojoules per mole in a mole of photons. They come in and hit these electrons. What do the electrons do? Well, the quick answer to that is the electrons absorb that energy and get promoted to a higher energy level themselves. The next logical question from you would probably be, what's an energy level then? Is it like a bigger circle? Um, and that is a weakness that ex exposes one of the weaknesses of this model. It was a vast, it is a vast oversimplification. Um, but to quote Jack Nicholson, back in third year, you couldn't handle the truth at the time. Um, so what we're going to do now is show different representations. I'm going to draw an energy level here. What is an energy level? Still haven't answered that question. Um, it's a part of the weird world of quantum mechanics, which we're going to dip our toe into perhaps later on today. Uh, effectively, it tells you which of these rings you're dealing with. Um, and it corresponds to a quantum number. And we'll come back to look at the other quantum numbers much later on. But in the meantime, let's imagine that here's our little electron sitting at its ground state. That's its normal energy level when it's minding its own business. In comes your blue photon, whacks the unsuspecting electron, and somewhere up here there is a higher energy level. So what happens to that electron? It gets removed from existence here, and then reappears up here earn the higher energy level. So this is the promoted, that's what we call promoting electrons. Um, promoting, sorry, promoted level, which is just higher than the ground state where it started. Um, you notice I didn't say it moves up, I said it deletes it from reality and it reappears here. This is just one of the weirdest things about quantum mechanics. There are no energy levels between these. It doesn't move up progressively through them. This is what's called quantization. A suitable analogy for that would be uh, the second hand on my watch here, which ticks from second to second. It does it quite quickly, but it still sweeps through all the possible positions. A digital watch shows zero, and then one, and then two, and it doesn't show any time in between. That's quantization. Um, so, um, Basically, the, the concept that I'm trying to get across to you today is, when, it's an answer to my question, what happens to the energy? And the answer is, when a photon hits an electron, the energy in the photon is absorbed and promotes that uh, electron up to a higher energy level. Promoting, if I can spell it right, the electron up to a higher energy level. And just before we leave, the phrase what goes up must come down, I suppose, although not really appropriate to that because that's still physical movement. This electron does not stay up here for the rest of eternity. It will collapse back 
down. It will delete itself from here, it will reappear down here, and it will emit that energy back out again. So there's, um, when, the, when the photon hits the electron, the energy in the photon is absorbed, the electron appears up here, ding! Uh, sometime later, the electron will relax back down to its original ground state, so it deletes from here and it reappears down here and that energy gets emitted back out again, but not destroyed, as the physics people quite correctly tell us. Um, so what learning outcomes have I covered here? Not much. Um, I've covered, hopefully, where on page 6 of the SQE document, that when energy is transferred to atoms, Electrons within the atoms may be promoted to higher energy levels. You notice there's a maybe there, interestingly. Now, why is there a qualifier on that? Because there is a certain energy gap here, in number terms, of course. We're going to call that delta E. Now, what happens if a photon of lower than this amount of energy hits the electron? Absolutely nothing. Because that is the minimum energy you're going to need to promote it up to that level. So that's why the put may... Uh, result in the promotion of electron. Um, and then the next learning outcome is that an atom emits a photon of light energy when the excited electron, this one here, that's what is referred to excited electrons, moves from a higher energy level back down to a lower energy level. And um, the light energy that's emitted by an atom produces a spectrum that's made of a series of lines at discrete energy levels. This is one last concept that chemists use. It turns out that if, when falling back down again, you get a very distinct pattern. And every single element has its own pattern. It's wonderful. It's like a fingerprint, a way of identifying elements. Uh, and that is exactly what we're going to move on to now. I'm going to stop this video. Um, and I'm going to start uh, another video on the subject of spectroscopy. That's identifying chemical elements using transitioning electrons as they either absorb or emit light.